Now we've discussed basically the underlying algorithms and we're gonna move on to discussing a couple of the examples that were present um, during sort of the evaluation stages of these algorithms. So the first one we're considering is a continuous bandit problem. And for those of you that don't know what that is, it's basically when you're in, let's say you're in a casino and you have a bunch of bandits, like one-armed bandits that you can play with. Um, you wanna pick which one, like you wanna pick the ones that are most profitable um, because they have different reward distributions. Um, and you need to also explore, obviously, because if you have a, a large set of these machines, you have some fixed number of time that you can play for, and you want to maximize your reward. So it's a trade-off between exploration and exploitation, basically, because if you're exploring too much, then you're not going to utilize the, the ones that seem to be the best. But if you're not um, exploring enough, you're going to stick to one that's potentially suboptimal. So for this particular problem, uh, the cost function was quadratic. So we can see the form of it um, in, in the middle up here. Uh, and we can you know, expand that expression so to, to see that it's a quadratic form. Uh, we basically have the matrix multiplication uh, indicated in the, in the blue box there. So that's the cost function and we wanna minimize uh, the cost basically. So for the um, stochastic policy, we're using a, a Gaussian isotropic policy, uh, which has a, a mean parameter uh, theta and then also a variance parameter so that even though we've trained this policy, you would have some sort of uh, variance internal to it so that we don't always pick the same action. For the deterministic one, on the other hand, uh, we have a, you know, a deterministic policy governed by theta. So there we would always make the take the same action once we've, once we've trained this policy. Uh, in order to train it and to have the exploration aspect, we have a be behavioral policy that also fo follows a normal distribution. And <clears throat> What we can see then at the bottom right is the results from these uh, evaluations. They were done for a number of different dimensions, which would represent the number of slot machines. And we have 10, 25, and 50, as you can see. Uh, the thing that you should really note from this, uh, and by the way, the SAC is, uh, is the stochastic algorithm, critic algorithm, and then the COPDAC is the, is the deterministic one. Uh, and what we can note here is that in general, the, the COPDAC algorithm performs better than, uh, than the SAC algorithm. And in particular, for the 50 dimensions case or the higher dimensional cases in general, the discrepancy between the two algorithms is, is large. And the reason because this, or the reason underlying this difference is um, that in the stochastic case, we need to evaluate an integral over both the state space and the um, action space. However, in the deterministic case, we get rid essentially of the um, action space integral. So when the number of action dimensions grows really large, you get a high variance in terms of the, the stochastic case because you need to evaluate the integral, uh, well, to you know the the double integral, and sampling the action space becomes uh, becomes tricky. Whereas in the deterministic case, we can avoid that, and you can see that in a much faster convergence um, as as we have in in the graph here. Um, and this is the cost function uh, that I forgot to to note. So basically, the lower value we have, the the better it is. Um, and moving on, uh, in that case. Uh, from this continuous bandit problem to a, to a number of other problems. Uh, we have uh, three problems in particular, namely the mountain car problem, the pendulum problem, and the uh, puddle world or 2D puddle world problem. So just to quickly go over what the objective is for these ones. In case of the mountain car, the car starts in the, in the bottom trench um, and wants to make it up to the flag that you can see on the right-hand side. The torque of the car is not sufficient to just drive up. So what needs to happen is the car needs to drive uh, then let go of the gas so it rolls back, and then using the momentum, uh, basically, that it gains from the previous iteration, you need to throttle them to make it up uphill. Uh, the second one is the, is the pendulum, which is basically just an inverted pendulum that you're trying to um, keep aligned. And the third one is the uh, 2D puzzle world, um, puddle world. So you start somewhere in this uh, maze and you want to make it to a goal, but you need to avoid the dark regions, which give you a big penalty. Uh, in the graphs of the performance as well that are underneath, we should note that it's the reward per episode that we're measuring there. So it's not the cost function as in, in the last picture, but rather we want to be as high up in this graph as, as possible. And there's three algorithms that are uh, being displayed here. Firstly, we have a, a stochastic algorithm. Uh, it's it's uh, one developed by or presented in degrees. And it's a Gaussian policy uh, based on a linear combination of features uh, so that we have an unbiased estimate. Um, and there is also a, a linear value function approximation. This one in particular was selected based on a number of different algorithms uh, specifically to perform well on the uh, mountain core task. So, so that is why this one is used. For comparison then, we have the Kobrak 
uh, QL code them. So this is the deterministic one. And there we're using a, a target policy, which is uh, based on the parameters five from, from before, and it's deterministic. We also follow a behavioral policy as usual in, in the training phase. And in, indeed, in this case, also we're using a, a linear value function approximator. Uh, lastly, we're also using a off PAC algorithm, uh, which is an off policy uh, actor critic uh, algorithm, with a, which is stochastic as well, uh, in order to yield even more comparison. So it uses a behavioral policy uh, and then trains its own stochastic policy as a consequence, also with a linear function approximator. If we look at the figures now and, and the graphs of performance, uh, we can see that in all cases, the Kopitak algorithm outperforms the other ones. The difference is not as substantial as in uh, the figure that we saw before, where we basically have a very big difference between, um, well, the deterministic one and the stochastic one. So in general, uh, what can be said is that the Kopitak algorithm performs well on these tasks, even better than, uh, than the comparable uh, stochastic actor critic algorithms. But the main takeaway is that where this sort of methodology really flourishes and really outperforms the stochastic case is when we have a large set of like a large action space uh, because we really limit the the integral there and, and don't have to evaluate that so we substantially lower the variance and therefore also enhance the, the performance uh, so that's it for for the topics i had to present uh, thank you very much for watching this video and uh, stay tuned for the next one thanks